very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, it's it's actually quite lovely to uh, see a full house today. So um, the event uh, basically it's it's a celebration of uh, the students who are going out to universities this year. It's it's also an attempt to um, look at the journey of some of our alums. The, the panel discussion will revolve around life at university. Uh, the students will delve deeper into the experiences they've had. Uh, so please uh, welcome Sahaj and Chitali, Tanisha Jain, uh, Resham Khanna, and Radhika Sharma. I would like to start, like, just talk about the cultural shift that I experienced the moment I moved away from home. And I'm, it's my second year, and I, I still wait for April to come so I can come back home for four months and just sleep on my bed and just wait for the food to come on my bed and be like, yes, Didi, I want to eat idli, please, and no waffles. It was a huge task um, to actually go away from my parents that I actually thought it would be. It was like a different, it was so different that I never thought it would be so different. Like, that's how I would put it across. Yes, uh, so yes, cultural shock is a big thing that we experience. Um, uh, my school particularly had this orientation program re regarding cultural shock. So we all got to see what difference, uh, what there was, there were a lot of, lot of differences that we could see over there. I had no problem with food or the space I was living. I never thought about it. I had to do it and that was kind of uh, hard. Uh, from personal experience, I think I speak for most of us when I say that we're spoiled and we get everything very easily. I wake up and I have my cup of tea right next to my bed when I'm at home, but that's not how it works there. <laughs> so for me, the cultural shock was the food, definitely. I'm a vegetarian, and I was surprised when I went there and the food was horrible. So sometimes things are not going to be the way you think. Sometimes the food is not going to be the way you like, and you have to cook yourself. So I will probably suggest all of you to please learn, because mm. I struggled a lot. <laughs> And remember, your parents will definitely call you to ask you, what did you eat? That will be their yeah. first question, no matter what you're doing, what your grades are. <laughs> their first question be, will be, what did breakfast? Did you make it at dinner? Did you make it at dinner? Mama, I made it. It's okay. I haven't personally had issues with food. For the first year, I had a meal plan because we were still in the dorms and the university was taking care of our food habits and uh, offering us lunch, uh, breakfast, lunch and dinner. But um, when I moved off campus the second year, I had never cooked in my life. <laughs> but I think um, just it, there was no one else to do it for me. So I had to learn. And within a month, I think I got the hang of it. Um, but apart from food, I think um, a bigger culture shock to me was that a lot of people had prepared me for the academic rigor and the work that I would have to put into my classes, but no one really talked about the managing life alongside with it. Um, because when I settled into my dorm room, which was probably the size of a closet, like my side, um, and I was in a double room, I thought, how hard could it be? Um, you know, I, my mom likes to keep things very clean, like, beta kapre fold karke almari mein rakho, or yeah, don't leave your books on your, on your table like this, you should put them in a stack and store them away neatly. Um, general things like that, just making your bed in the morning. And what I didn't realize was how hard it would be to manage that closet size space of my own. But again, it takes time and it takes patience. Uh, but as long as you start seeing that as more of a, of a learning experience rather than a chore, I think um, it becomes easier. So um, another thing I would like to talk about is the self-sustaining skills that we learn when we go. Like, I'm so much more independent when I come back. So although there are a lot of negatives there, there are so many more positives. Like today or day before yesterday, my father and me went somewhere and there was a long queue. And I went and stood behind patiently. And he's like, chalo, chalo, se line cut karte hai. And I'm like, I can't do it. I felt so guilty. He like went and I was literally like hiding my face. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. And I was a person who would like, there would be a long queue. I would literally go, like just go and stand there. So like there are a lot of things that you learn when you go. Like, for example, patience. Like I was a person who probably couldn't deal with five seconds of anything. Like, I would just get so mad. Now, like, somebody fights in front of me for two hours, I just, like, sit there and, like, just 
smile because it just changes everything changes when you go like even like buying your own groceries making your own list like the first semester when i had to do all my groceries i would just go on walmart and just keep adding and then i would see oh hundred dollars and I would literally go through it and like now after staying so the first year I stayed in a dorm and second year I moved into my own apartment with my friends from Delhi and Bombay so staying in the same place like it seemed so easy but when the dishes would be waiting and everybody would just blame each other oh that's your dishes and we would just end up having fights every week so it's like you have to deal with people all the time it's not like your house you can't just shout at somebody and be like aap kar do mama and it's like you have to like respect everybody respect everybody's privacy their feelings so although there's so many negatives and like you find it's really hard but at the end it really pays off like now when i'm by myself at my house like i can do everything like i don't need a didi anymore although i crave for it like my dad says wahan pe to apna sara khud kaam kar le to yahan pe har baat mein aapko didi chahiye hoti hai but it's just like you just want those four months because you know after four months you're going to be again in the same routine and the same system i can attest to that fact my dad has also told me that why don't you get a secretary who will do everything for you because you're just lying on the bed all the time when i'm here. um so yeah let's move on to uh the opportunities that we see when we reach our university so um what the time that you enter the university you see that there's so many opportunities that you have there's so many different clubs my personal university has over 1000 clubs that you can enter and all of them are going into different sec- uh, sectors such as uh you know f1 racing or electronic racing or professional fraternities greek life there's so many opportunities out there and w- uh, once we enter uh, as a freshman we are really flabbergasted by uh, all this so I'll ask my panelists to talk more about what to do you, uh, like how to pick out your options and what to uh, look out for. Thank you. Um so I still remember the day I entered my you know like the main building and they had like this sort of a fair where all the clubs and stuff were and they were tra- sort of advertising you know like join us join us and stuff like that. And I remember I was all enthusiastic. I was like yeah I'm going to join that one that one like I had like a long list. And then um I remember after everything you know sort of cooled down and I actually had to choose like what I'm going to do. I chose one club. So I feel like at least for me I have 7 hours of class every day and it wasn't practical for me to join 10 different clubs because you have to give your academics the priority that's what you're there for. But it's equally important to uh you know indulge indulge yourself in stuff outside the classroom because otherwise you're going to just get sad. <laughs> so do it. and you get to meet a lot of people and you get to do a lot of things like um so i'm part of the south asian group which is basically the indians and the koreans and the chinese and we meet up to watch bollywood movies and have maggi movie nights it's nice to just have that break after my long week of classes that i do and it's also nice now that i'm uh, thinking of opening my own club because i'm starting of thinking of starting a quiz club at my college which i don't have yet and you know once you start something at college it stays so it's it's like i'm starting a legacy so always think of stuff like that it's like you're going to leave a part of yourself when you're out of college too so try to be original i guess yeah uh personally for me like the first day i went there and i saw so many clubs and i was like will i have time for clubs like i already had the list of classes which i had to go and one of the classes was like for 6 hours just one class and i was like i don't have time for this so one of my friends were like suggested me that like every quarter they will tell you what all new clubs are there and what all clubs you can go to so i was like i'll wait for a quarter like the like two and a half months so i can just start like see what all is there in a the college life because i don't know what a college life is all about So first quarter I was like I'll see I'll go to each and every club I can talk to my friends I can talk to teachers and I can talk to other people in college like what are clubs do they uh, are they in and what's all the clubs are about so I literally got to know about each and every club there was and there was like there's so many things to do and it's too hard to choose so for I waited for like what 6 months then I joined a club and 
it's not like you have to choose an activity or you have to do it. It's like what you want to do, what you are interested in. You will get more opportunities. If you don't get to, into one club, you will get into another club or if you have time or if you have, don't have time. So it's all on you. So you have to choose. Um, personally, for me, I think <clears throat> I wasn't prepared for how big my college actually was. Um, I think class sizes and... Um, Batch sizes are very important when you consider which college you want to go to because there will be small size colleges uh, with very personalized attention. There will be medium colleges where it's a mix of um, getting uh, relevant attention and also having some level of self-accountability. And then there are large schools where um, you feel slightly lost initially. Um, after high school especially, uh, from going to a 20, anywhere between a 20 to a 40 person class to going to a class with 2,000 other people, which was in my case, um, in my freshman year, uh, first semester. Uh, I think it's very important to strike a balance between how much you actually want to take on, because a lot of us, uh, we go with these very long lists of clubs um, that we want to join 20 things, and I also want to do this, and I want to do that, and I'll take five classes, and I'll join this club. Um, but in the end, I think that sort of starts tapering down as the semester progresses. Um, so it's very important to challenge yourself, but at the same time, um, not overdo it. Um, personally, for me, um, I also started out with quite a long list of clubs that I wanted to join, um, but eventually I think um, my passions actually started showing through when I realized that I was passionate about um, education and uh, technology, which is uh, where I focus in mostly now. Uh, started I, first, first semester I joined about three clubs, I'd say that was uh, quite tough because um, all of these clubs were very demanding with uh, time and commitments anywhere between seven to 15 hours per week each, which when you add on on top of classes and navigating through um, going and getting food yourself, cleaning, cleaning your room, making friends, um, trying to understand where campus is, where your classes are, and these campuses can be huge. So. Um, if you're in a college town on a 1,200-acre campus and you're looking for a very specific room in a very specific building, it can be a little overwhelming. So I think in the first semester, it's also really important to give yourself, be easy on yourself and give yourself the time to actually adjust to your new surroundings. Just as our panelists said, uh, time, man uh, time management can be a really big issue once you are there because you like so many different things and you want to be part of each and every club but then you don't have the time to actually accommodate that in your schedule. So yes, as Reshim said, it's better to take a, a semester to get used to what you want to do and list out your options. Uh, for example, there was this club uh, that I wanted to really join in my first semester, which was the Flying Club. But then I was also rushing for my fraternity. If I, have, if I would have done both, I, I can guarantee, uh, guarantee you that I would have not made it to my fraternity, and uh, I wouldn't have even been able to contribute as much time to the flying club. So uh, it's better that you actually list down your options and also keep track of the f fiscal ap aspect of it. Because once you're part of these clubs, they also charge you money according to, uh, according to the semester. So please keep track of that. So according to me, opportunities are not only focusing on clubs. Clubs are like a part of university, but also like for me, for example, since I'm studying in Canada, it's a huge long flight for me. I want it to be closer to home. So it's like you have to find your own way. You have to manage time, academics, activities, going out with your friends and giving time to yourself, which is a very big priority when you go away from home. So um, I also opportunities include like going for an exchange program. Like I'm, I applied for, I wanted to actually come back home because I was so tired for two years. So I had to find my own way. So I applied for exchange programs um, in UK so that it's less like it's eight hours of a flight. So my parents could come meet me more often rather than a 16 hour flight. So it's like, although I'm focusing, like I'm still focusing on my academics, like. I know that I'm going to still complete my degree in four years because I didn't want to extend that. So I took I took all of this into consideration while I was looking at all the opportunities that I had. 
And also you get to go for a lot of MUNs, competitions. You get to fly all across, which is a very exciting thing, especially when you get your breaks, you plan your trips, especially if you're like in an area like Canada. So you can like, for me, like going to New York or like going somewhere close by. So there are a lot of opportunities that you always have to look out for. And in university, it's not like school. You don't get a circular saying these are the activities. You have to go fetch it yourself. Nobody's going to come and be like, oh, this is what you can do. You have to go find your own way, look at events. And as you all know, like over there, like although you have a lot of, you make a lot of Indian friends, but there's so much competition that you have to like always watch out. There are going to be times when your own people won't tell you what is going to happen next. So it's just you and you're in the ocean and you got to swim on the other side. I would just add that, um, you know, like my college started their whole, like they have these apps for internships and for, um, you know, their, uh, you know, even the financial aid and everything, they have apps for it now. And um, I did not know that. So my friend told me and I, then I instantly downloaded them. So keep good watch of your mails because they're very important. <laughs> if you don't go check your mailbox, you wouldn't know what's happening. So... I feel like you need to watch out for opportunities because they're not going to come to you if you don't go to them. So be eager and take what comes in. Um, so, okay, a good example of um, keeping your eyes and ears open is very important because um, sometimes things do get advertised, but the people who are in charge of advertising them would put them somewhere where you may or may not have access to them. Um, so we have an application called Slack, which is basically a software. Like, it's basically a platform that a lot of companies and organizations use to, for internal communications uh, within Teams. And um, I was just browsing through my notifications on one of the channels that I was on, and I saw that there was an that there was a fellowship opportunity, which was which seemed very aligned to what I wanted to do. So it was um, in the wellness and technology sector. And I realized that the application deadline, the application was only open for a week. And they required five essays and uh, three references and um, your transcripts. So it was, it was going to take some time. So if I wanted to apply, I had to start right then. Um, and if I hadn't opened my phone at that exact moment or browsed through that exact channel, because that channel got about over 100 messages every day, um, it was very easy for me to be, to be to have missed that opportunity, and um, sometimes things click in place. But it's also equally important to read flyers, even as you're walking down the hallways, or even talk to people um, who have similar interests as you do, because even through casual conversation, sometimes things can um, materialize, and I think that's very important. And um, after I applied for the fellowship, uh, I actually ended up. Um, qualifying for it, and I'll be starting that uh, next year. But if it hadn't been for that, uh, that moment and that channel that I just happened to be on, even though that wasn't a club that I was part of, but was interested in, um, none of that would have happened. So I think it's very important to um, sort of keep your horizon sort of broadened. Yeah. Now we want to talk about what the academic approach is from the Indian boards. So I think Chitali would like to speak on it. So I'm from an ISC, ICSC background, so I'm not an IB student. Um, it's a huge shift, especially when I see my own IB friends just write those essays in two hours. I take 72 hours. So um, you, have a, you have to actually budge more than other people. You have to work harder than other people because they are always in a habit of giving their IAs or whatever their system works like. Also, coming from an IB student gives you credits from high school, which an ISC or a CBSE school doesn't. That means I have to I have to attain all the credits they require for me. I can't take anything back from high school. But for IB students, they can just transfer English, math, or whatever course, psychology, and they can get it into their university. So that means they have completed those requirements. Also, uh, one thing that you should always keep in mind if you're heading to university is your first semester. When, P, when your parents say that you college not to in college, it doesn't apply outside. <laughs> you have to study every day. You can't wait till the last minute and be like, oh, I can just you know, remember this and go and write the exam. It doesn't work like that. You have to work 
every second there. You can't you can't skip a day. If you actually skip a day, even going to class, it's like you skip two weeks of high school. The syllabus over there is so fast that you blink your eye and you're on another century. Especially for my case, when I study history, I start from 1400 and in four months, I'm 2000. So I have to remember like 500 names, 1000 dates, 1000 locations. And it's just like, you have to do it with time. You can't sit last night and think that it's all going to happen. So especially first semester, everybody, I feel like my friend circle took it very lightly and so did I. But I just feel because I was an architecture student, it was more of studio work. So like I was always doing it because I had to submit a model and I knew it's not going to happen overnight. It requires time. So always whenever you're going to university, your first semester is very crucial because it's a big leap from high school. You don't, you don't even realize what you're doing the first four months. You're trying to add just to the surroundings, the food, the atmosphere, the friends, trying to like recover from homesickness. There are a lot of things that you have to keep in mind when you're actually going to university, and especially the first semester, because especially like um, I, like me and my father, like left two weeks in advance because he wanted me to show the surroundings and wanted me to be aware about the transportation system or basic things, whereas the hospital, because... Obviously, if anything happens that time, nobody's going to especially fly for me. It's like, it's all, you have to find your own way. You have to go. And especially hospitals there, like, although they have, like, really great service, but you have to wait. Like, I have had friends who have gone to emergency and have waited five hours, five hours. And it's like, you actually want to just, that time, you just want to take a flight and just come home and be like, can we get treated here now? So... It's not just, a, like, first year, and I feel first semester especially, you should actually be very vigilant of your surroundings. Also, the fact that it's not safe anywhere. Like, you can't just say, oh, Canada is safe, or America is safe, or London is safe. It's very unsafe. Like, I, although I live outside, and at 3 a.m. or, like, 2 a.m., whenever I'm heading home, like, I'm panicking. It's not like I'm taking a stroll to home. It's like I have to look left, right, center, especially abroad. There are a lot of homeless people, and they, like, talk to you. It's not like India, ki apne raat ko so jayenge. So um, whenever you're heading to university or college or school, like, you should always be aware of what you're doing, what courses you're picking. It's at, because nobody's there to guide you. It's yourself who is guiding you. Till now, you you have, like, your parents, you have Charu, ma'am, you have everybody here. You know, it's like you skip a deadline, it's fine. There's somebody else looking out for you. But over there, it doesn't work like that. You miss it, you miss it. There's no second chance. So try to focus on what is important to you. It's either academics or it's co-curricular activities, whatever. For me, first semester, I didn't join any clubs. I had architecture. It took like, I, would, I wouldn't sleep for three days. I would have to, I would eat my food like when I would be like, oh, if I don't eat right now, I'm actually gonna fall down. Like, that's how it is. So you have to always be, oh, you should be open to what you're gonna feel like and it's gonna be really different. You would wanna come back home. Like first week, I wanted to actually just like come home. So it's more like you'll like meet a lot of different people there. There will be times that people won't accept you. you you'll get used to it. And there will be like, people will definitely accept you with open hands. You will meet different kind of people and they will have different kind of like point of view about you and about the world as well. So no matter what, you have to keep in mind what you think. It's not about what they are thinking about you. It's about what you think about the world. So no need to let be let down or whatever. You just have to see that, yes, I am here. I'm doing something right. So I'm here. Also, guys, remember when you pick your university, think about the weather. I, I, die, I die in minus 40 degree and nothing, nothing works. You have to wake up and go for your 9 a.m. There's no 9, 10. Thank you so much.